Hello and welcome to the next Luke Kaiser Retro Game Review video. And for this one it is Indianapolis 500 which was released for Commodore Amiga by Electronic Arts. I think, yep there you go. In 1990. And this is another game that I had back in the day and rather like a lot of people who bought this game back in the day I was initially rather disappointed because it is not the game that I thought it would be but I'll uh, get back to that in a moment now this music that you can hear is rather forgettable which makes it all the more disappointing that as you can see this music is by Rob Hubbard it is not one of his more memorable uh, soundtracks. In fact, uh, like a lot of uh, Commodore 64 musicians, Rob Hubbard did not make the transition to the uh, Amiga very well at all. So anyway, here we have a quick uh, demo mode uh, showing one of the camera angles. I will briefly show the camera uh, during the uh, game. I know that uh, there were plenty of people who bought this back in the day and basically all they did was try and cause as many horrendous crashes as they could and multiple pile-ups and then save what they thought was a great uh, replay. Yes, okay, it, you know, it was a novelty at the time. I think this was one of, if not the, first uh, racing game to have all these like additional camera angles and uh, the ability to save uh, particular replays but it's a novelty that didn't really interest me I wanted to actually play the game so anyway let's get the game loaded uh, right at what average speed did this car win the 500 well, looking at that car I'd say it's faster than thrust SSC so I'll say it did it at 1350 mph average and look at that I was right so um, well you have a choice of three teams the March Cosworth the Lola Buick and the Penske Chevrolet um, the March Cosworth is the slowest car, but it is the easiest to drive. The Lola Buick is the middle of, as far as both. The Penske Chevrolet is bloody fast, and it, it, uh, it is also pretty tough to, to drive. I'm not that keen on it. So uh, we'll start in the March Cosworth then to give you an idea of uh, how the game uh, uh, performs. Now I'm playing this on a uh, Amiga 1200 setup because although the game was perfectly playable on Amiga 500, particularly if you lowered the uh, graphics settings, I'll just show you here, I keep mouse sensitivity to low. Um, it sounds ridiculous, but uh, especially with this uh, Windows mouse, uh, yeah, you need well I certainly need to keep mouse, sens uh, mouse sensitivity as low as I can uh, graphics details so there you go so you have the option of low medium or high um, on a 1200 it, it runs high without breaking a sweat um, but yes on a 500 you probably want to stick with uh, maybe medium at best you don't really want to be running it at high because the frame rates do start to really uh, drop and then of course the game is not as fun to play so um, right, I'll just also mention that uh, file here so you can save uh, the various car settings that uh, you use and then reload them later on and likewise you can save instant replays and then load them back later on if you really want to um, I won't be doing that so let's get on to uh, the practice here we are in the pits now there are plenty of uh, options as far as uh, how to uh, you know adjust the car settings and all that and believe me you will need to do them at some point uh, so 
at the moment it's saying our best app is uh, 43.3 I've done much better than that uh, in the past but then the game has just loaded uh, if we look there we can see that we are currently in 33rd place we are car 17 because we haven't set a uh, practice uh, or haven't uh, set a uh, qualifying uh, lap no, I'm not going to do any of that yet we'll just uh, get the car out of the pits so uh, controlling the car is pretty straightforward uh, hold down right mouse button to accelerate then it's left and right uh, mouse movement and then left mouse button activates the brake that is the basic controls there are other controls which I'll explain as we go on so uh, with this being the out lap this lap is going to be very very slow I mean currently 1 minute 16 uh, if you were getting 1 minute 16s on a, uh, on a flying lap you've done something very wrong so you can see uh, graphically it's uh, vector graphics rather like uh, the last game I reviewed and these are pretty fast actually the, the graphics do look I think they look great they move great as well um, there is absolutely no problems with frame rates here as I say probably because of the fact I'm using Amiga 1200 setting uh, if you put a, an accelerator onto an Amiga 500 even if it was like you know uh, a 68020 that would still be enough you know, have it uh, running at uh, what about 20 megahertz that would still be plenty fast enough and that you know would make all the difference so let's see uh, there we go so that last lap was 4521 and considering that it wasn't a bad lap that I'd put in that does rather show how slow this car is 4521 I'll tell you now is a terrible lap when you look uh, next to it, it shows the uh, average speed of the lap, 199.07. So it's not even averaging 200. That's how bad it is. If you can't average 200, you are going to get nowhere. Now, while I'm, uh, we'll try one at this one last step to see if I can beat 45.21. I think I will. But not by as much as I thought right we'll come into the pits at the end of this lap now I'll explain what I said at the start about why I was disappointed uh, when I first got this because like I say this is a game I had back in the day um, like so many uh, other people you know certainly in my generation I mean this came out in 1990 so I was 18 when I bought this I thought it was just going to be, as I fuck up that corner, I thought it was going to be like, you know, an arcade style racer. So, I was uh, hoping it would basically be like, uh, I'm trying to remember the name of that arcade uh, racing game, is it Monaco Grand Prix or whatever, where uh, you play it as an arcade game, even though it's, you know, cockpit view and all that. But no, it is not. It's far more detailed. It is a, a simulator. It's not an arcade game as such. I mean, you can play it as an arcade game. You can just, you know, grab the mouse, go straight into qualifying with this car, and then forever be complaining that, uh, you know, you can't finish any higher than last. You've got to do, you know, some sort of... Uh, adjustments to it so anyway you saw that terrible time that I did there now let's uh, change the car let's change team so we'll go into the Lola Buick now, I'll tell you now this is the car that I usually use this is uh, my favorite of uh, the three so let's we'll bring this out you can hear this has very different engine. The uh, engines seem to be, or the revs anyway, are a lot lower. So 
also my previous best, I mean it hasn't even appeared on the uh, display there, but my previous best was, was it 45.16. So uh, we'll get this outlap done and then we'll see how this compares. Now as you've seen I've not uh, done any changes to uh, the car at all. So this is purely down to uh, the, the car chassis and the uh, the engine. Now that car ahead of me, uh, I am catching up with it, but very very slowly. I find that with the, the setups I like, I'm pretty fast through the corners, but my straight line speed is not fantastic. So I am catching it in the corners but uh, yeah on these straights here I should really have tucked in behind it because you can do like slip streaming that is in this game you know, there's just about every aspect of motor racing has been programmed into this game so you know it's got the full works so I'm bloody close to it so 43.29 I've taken off two seconds of that previous uh, best as that uh, other car ploughed into me as uh, it went round the corner I have a horrible feeling that means that there is now going to be uh, an obstruction in the uh, on the track as we uh, try and go round which is going to be a pain in the ass. well we'll soon find out anyway I'll do this lap and then we'll uh, I was going to pull into the pits but we'll, we'll do a, uh, another lap to see if there is anything you see how much that affected my lap time so uh, we'll see if there is anything on the uh, circuit here yes there is and that is in a really fucking awkward place so what I will do we'll escape and we'll restart practice. Now my my best time should still be there. Yeah, it is. So it's still 43.29. So all right, that's the time I managed in this uh, car in the Lola Buick. So let's change to the Penske Chevrolet. You can instantly see that the uh, uh, the cockpit is very very different. So let's uh, take this car out. Now, like I say, this car, the handling is fucking tricky. The, uh, the the speed this car can go at is immense. It's much faster than the uh, uh, than that one, than the uh, the Lola Buick. But I mean, look, I'm having a break while going around the fucking corner. I just cannot get on with the handling of this car. It's oh, it's fucking horrible. Um, there's no like options to uh, centre your car, you've got to get it back on the track. And now I have to try and straighten it up and get up to speed before anyone ploughs into the back of me. So thankfully this is an outlap so it's not going to completely uh, ruin things but I've got to somehow get round cannot fucking control this car it's such a tricky one to uh, put a lap together right let's see how we do then this is the the, uh, the uh, flying lap oh fucking what was that so yes a complete fucking bollocks up that's all right let's put it back in the pits Oh, let's have one more stab then at, at, at doing it, but um, yeah, this car is just such a fucking handful. I say it is extremely fast. It's it's the fastest of the three, or at least it is when you've got everything running in default settings. So my best time then forty three point two nine which I have to say is a decidedly average time you, you want to be getting into like 
the 40s, you know, 40, uh, in fact, I, even better if you can get it down in the 39s, but, um, yeah, 43, you're not going to be winning too many races with, uh, you know, best lap time, 43 seconds. So that's the out lap, let's see if we can uh, do anything on the actual flying lap. sending us very wide there. I was having to take my finger off the accelerator there because it just throws you so far out. Steering in a lot wider there than I wanted to and I've lost a lot of speed on that corner there. But, I mean, despite losing that speed, there you go, 42.82. So that is my best uh, time so far. And hit the wall again. And that now I'm going to start spinning. There we go. So, right, I, I'm just, I just cannot get on with that car. So we'll restart practice and now we'll change to uh, the Lola Buick again. And this is going to be the uh, car that I will stick with for the rest of the video. So we'll uh, resume driving and now we'll uh, have a check at what uh, changes we can make to the car. So 42.82 is the best that I've done so far and that was in a faster car than this. So we'll make very very gradual changes to begin with. So let's start by first of all uh, going through the tyres and then the fuel. Right, well we can lower the amount of fuel we've got because we're not going to be doing a huge uh, amount of laps. So I filled it to do 20, okay, so that's half full. The only other change I'm going to do is with the tyre compounds. You'll notice that uh, the front and rear rights are a harder compound than the front and rear lefts. So this is always the case with... Uh, Indy cars because of course with the uh, circuit being an oval and all of the uh, uh, corners being 90 degree uh, lefts the right tyres take uh, they go through a hell of a lot of wear so this is more a sort of qualifying setup I'm looking at here by changing uh, tyres to soft so I now have better grip as far as getting through the corners and better grip to help the acceleration rate and also of course my car is lighter because I only have uh, 20 uh, laps worth of fuel so we'll just do those two changes first and see what difference this makes so I can already feel the car is a much easier to get through the corners and you want as little tyre squeal as possible because that means you're then losing uh, less speed through the corners here that's okay it got better but yeah the entry to that corner really wasn't very good of course this is an outlap so <laughs> at this time it's going to be meaningless anyway so, right, let's uh, get us across the line. Right, here we go. So, now this is this is where it counts. This is the flying lap. First corner, not bad. Second corner, okay with that. There's a very fast car coming up behind me. He's going to pass us on the straight. No need to do anything to hold him off. This is uh, a sort of just trying out this uh, setup but you notice that uh, through the corners he's not pulling away from me uh, this is I say this is very common of uh, the way that I drive the cars in this game I'm I'm relatively quick through the corners but not on the straights so 42.7 so that is now my new best it's only taken off 0.12 but nevertheless that uh, previous time was set in a car that's much faster than this 
and all I have done to this car is say make it a bit lighter by taking out some of the fuel and change the, the uh, tyre compounds of the two uh, left uh, tyres and that's it and it's made that much of an improvement so let's come back into the pits then and we'll see what other changes we can make came in a bit too fast there, it will reverse reversing in the pit lane is not really a very good idea because for one thing you fuck up the uh, entry and when you're reversing you often yeah, get a bit too far to the wrong side right, there we go, right so uh, first of all right, we'll refuel we'll also check the tyres they're all okay so let's have a look now adjusting the wings is where you can really make up most of uh, the changes to the car now I am not very good with a uh, low rear wing that's about as low as I can handle anything lower than that I'm, I'm terrible so we'll reduce the front so now the drag has been reduced and it's about half you know between maximum and minimum right well, so we've already set the uh, tyre compounds our diameter difference because with uh, Indy cars because again this is just an oval um, the uh, left hand uh, wheels are actually slightly smaller than the uh, the wheels on the right uh, side so if I increase that slightly to uh, 0.2 inch okay I don't need to worry too much about tyre pressures yet and I'm not going to worry too much about shock absorbers or cambers just yet that's going into the really advanced stuff same with the, the gears so I made those small changes very small changes I say just a little change to the uh, the wings and uh, the uh, tyre diameter difference so let's uh, see what that does take them out now with that uh, increased difference in uh, the uh, diameter difference it now actually means that okay going around the corners is a bit easier but it's now actually slightly more tricky to drive in a straight line the car constantly wants to uh, go to the left so you have to compensate for that while you are driving so it, it means that going through the, the corners, through the left no, you know, yep, nice and simple but keeping it on the straight line not so simple which sounds ridiculous, you know I can't keep my car in a straight line when I'm going around, around a, a circuit but yeah it is true so we've uh, done the out lap this is the flying lap that was a terrible corner that's not going to do my uh, time any favours Now I'm not going to reveal all of the changes to make because if you are going to try this game which I highly recommend because I've, I'm a fucking huge fan of this game then you know I want to leave some uh, surprises for you and leave you to figure out some ways of uh, improving the car's performance and like I say you can save uh, your settings so if you if you find a setting that you like then you know save it and uh, then you can you know gradually tinker with it some more and if you think you've ruined it you just reload the setting again from uh, the save place on the disc so right we're coming up then to uh, the start finish line see how we do it feels better 41 41.91 so again another improvement so it's definitely, uh, you know, all of these changes are certainly adding up. 
So I'll come back into the pits after this one. And uh, well, like I say, I'm not going to show you too many more changes. It's you know, you want to leave. Uh, I want to leave some things for you know other players to experiment. So uh, yeah, you do want to uh, try some things out for yourself rather than just have me showing you uh, everything. Now there are a couple of other controls in the game. So first of all, we'll. Uh, you notice there, there was a little wear on the uh, front uh, right, and also on the front left. I've uh, forgotten to change. There we go. So they've all been changed now, and it's fueled back uh, up. Now you can also let me just uh, double check everything here. So yes filter 20 not 40 I'm okay with those uh, wing settings for the moment yeah all the uh, tires are soft compound diameter difference um, well with the uh, tire presses obviously um, the lower the pressures the more grip you have but also if you have low uh, pressures um, you use more fuel so it's not always a good idea to keep them low but then at the same time if you have them too uh, high so if I, I'm, I'll put them all up to 23 which means actually turning that one taking that one down again but yeah, if you have them too high uh, they will wear out far quicker which you really don't want Shock absorbers, uh, the firmer uh, the shock absorbers, then that again helps with overall speed. Having too soft, the car's bouncing about all over the place and the handling is horrible. Um, so, but then at the same time, if you have them too firm, any slight knock and you are being thrown about all over the place. So the car gets harder to uh, control. And uh, then cambers, I can't bloody remember actually with cambers. So you'll have to... Uh, find that one out for yourself I'm afraid and then with gears um, it's again the adjustments uh, between them uh, all uh, depend on whether you want greater acceleration or greater top speed I find acceleration is uh, better um, but not so much that I will mess about with the gears because there is another way of changing your acceleration rate let's uh, head out here and we'll take a very very uh, leisurely uh, outlap while I explain the uh, uh, cockpit here so obviously right, you, have, you can clearly see the speedo clearly see the revometer and your temperature and your fuel there is a fuel warning light, there's also a uh, engine warning light, the red uh, light there is the engine warning, uh, the yellow one is your fuel gauge. Now then there is that uh, gauge on the uh, leftmost side and I've got to admit I'm not entirely sure what it's showing me. I'm going to end up doing, right, I'm going to do right, one standard uh, lap. Well, on that gauge, you'll see there is a number seven in the box. Now, that is the setting that your uh, turbo is at. Because this is... Well, the game was actually completed in 89, but it was published in 90. And they were still using turbos in uh, uh, Indy cars. And, of course, the driver could change uh, the turbo settings as they were in the car there. Now, you can change the turbo settings anywhere from 1 to 9 obviously 9 is going to use the most the, you know, the turbo that is most powerful 1 at the least powerful so it will increase uh, your acceleration rate and to a degree your speed but also of course you go through fuel like nobody's business so on this lap we'll get around here and then onto the uh, the long straight 
Right, now we'll set the uh, turbo up to 9. So we're going to do a little over half a lap with uh, the, uh, the turbo level on 9. You can already see the RPMs are entering into the red line and the uh, engine warning light is flashing when we're on the long straight. And when you're going through the corners it's okay, but through the long straight it's not so okay. So we did a 41.37, so again we've improved the lap time, but now we're going to do an, an entire lap with this uh, setting. See how we do then with uh, an entire lap. See what difference this makes. Now you can't just ignore that uh, engine warning light. I mean, look at the temperature, it's skyrocketed. If you ignore it and you just keep on going, your engine will blow. And then, well, there is nothing you can do. You're out of it. There you go, a 40.73. I'm going to put the uh, turbo setting back down to 7. So with those few changes then, whether it's you know, changing your team uh, to, you know, a, a better car. Okay, that's not necessarily a settings change, but it is a change. Uh, then uh, changing those few, those few um, settings to, uh, you know, how much you've fueled the car, drag uh, levels, your uh, tyre compounds, the, uh, the stagger, the tyre pressures, uh, well shock absorbers and what have you, cambers and gear ratios I haven't changed. Um, I was not also not watching what I was doing so let's uh, get back into the pits. So all of those really add up. So I think it's time to do a, uh, a a qualifying lap. Now as you can see we're currently in 33rd. Now my best time, 40.73. That's an average of 220.96 mile an hour. Now that means 220.96. That would have me qualifying in ninth place. Not bad. So let's see uh, how we go then with uh, an actual qualifying run. So, uh, qualifying. Now it instantly throws you into it because of course it's a rolling start. So, there's no warm up, here we go. So, qualifying for the Indy 500, you do four laps and your uh, average uh, speed on those four laps determines your qualifying position. As far as I'm aware it is still done that way today. So I've got the turbo on 9, I'm going to put the engine through sheer hell but I'm going to leave it on 9 for this entire qualifying run and hope the engine can take it. So uh, first lap is looking pretty good actually. 40.81 take that first two corners there were okay but I have managed to uh, corner better in my time that was reasonable That was much better. Right, let's uh, see what we get here. 40.64. Much better lap time. So average is 40.72. Average speed is 221.02. That's average. That's not, uh, not bad. I'll be pleasantly surprised if I can keep the average in, two, in the uh, 221s. Now you saw that uh, I you know, was doing 45s uh, laps when I first started. 
and now we're into the mid 40s okay white flag showing that this is the penultimate lap So uh, 40.51 that last uh, lap there, so we're, we're at 40.65 average. That's not bad. I'll certainly take that. Okay, so coming up the cross line for the final time. And we are indeed in ninth place. speed of 221.72 in fact we're so far ahead of 10th place and we're not that far away from uh, 8th place so yeah that's not bad and uh, the uh, Indy 500 that will put us on row 3 so uh, yeah that's uh, that's not bad going at all so um, time for a race I suppose now with a race you have uh, yeah three uh, chance uh, choices here you can do 10 laps which is you know basically a fucking sprint now with this there are no yellow flags so if you hit a car um, there's none of the yellow flag palaver which ain't fuck because one thing I don't like about IndyCar racing after every collision you've got four laps under the yellow flag you just think fucking get on with it uh, there's also no damage to your car, so I mean that really is arcade mode. 30 lap race, uh, again there's no car damage, but there are the yellow flag rules. So don't go around ramming every fucking car you see, because you'll spend almost the entire race under yellow flag conditions. 60 laps, uh, well that is raced as normal. Your car can be damaged and... Um, there's yellow flags and everything else and then finally 200 laps if you want to do the full distance i only ever tried racing the 200 laps uh i think i think about four or five times and the best i ever did was uh, i think i got to about lap 58 and then i crashed so yes i'm not going to bother with that so we'll do a 10 lap sprint just to show you how easy this mode is Again, it's a rolling start in the uh, Indy cars, so uh, as soon as you press fire, you're off and running. So uh, I'll also be ready with the uh, turbo mode. I don't think it's a good idea to leave the turbo on 9 for all 10 laps. So here we go. So because we were in position 9, we were in the outside uh, lane. I will be pleasantly surprised if we can make up too many places. I think I might be able to get... Oh, fucking hell. I am so close to that other car. There we go. So I'm up to 7th, actually. I thought that was uh, passing for 8th. I didn't think I had already passed the 8th place car. So we're uh, up to 6th. So while we're in this race... Let's get the review underway. Graphics. I think the graphics are outstanding. Uh, I think the game just looks superb. Um, the speed that they run at is fantastic. And even though I say I, I'm playing this on Amiga 1200. If you are prepared to lower the graphics settings. You can get this speed on an Amiga 500. So don't think, you know... You have to have an Amiga 500 to uh, be able to play this game. Um, then, of course, the things like the, uh, the the replays and the camera modes and all that. And I think this was the first game to introduce all that. So, yeah, it had that. I freely admit they are a really a novelty, but then that's all they are in any other game that uses them. So, you know, don't put too much value on those but yeah graphically I do think it looks superb and the speed that it runs at is extremely impressive uh, in terms of audio I mean in a, in a game like this the audio is never going to be phenomenal the uh, engine sounds are pretty good 
um, and the way that you know the other car engines you can hear them fade in as they get closer to you and then fade out again as you well, as they get further away whether it's because they overtake you or you overtake, you overtake them uh, the tire squeal is not too bad actually and it certainly helps to uh, gauge how well you're taking uh, the particular corner um, the collision sound is a bit shit and I must admit Rob Hubbard's music is pretty forgettable but they're very minor uh, you know, very minor issues and then the gameplay, well, I mean, once I got over the disappointment that it's not an arcade racer and it is a simulator, and I started playing it as such, I was absolutely hooked. Um, I thought it was a fantastic racing game then, and I still think it's a fantastic racing game now. Um, I'm a huge fan of this game, and I have been for a very, very long time. Um, I mean, obviously... The appeal of this game, well, it came to a grinding halt when along came Jeff Crammon's uh, Formula 1 Grand Prix. I mean, okay, this game does only have one circuit. It is only the Indy 500, whereas Formula 1 Grand Prix, you know, you have 16 circuits, and they're all far more... Shit, I really didn't want to fucking do that. I'm up the fourth, I'm fucking impressed by that. Uh, yeah, so, I mean, the Formula 1 Grand Prix, with all the uh, extra circuits, which are far more, you know, complex than this one, it's not just left, then left, then left, you know, you, you do have other, you know, corners taking you in other directions, I'm up to third, fuck me. I can't surely I'm not going to uh, get any higher than this so come on so anyway um, it, yeah it, it couldn't compete with uh, Formula 1 Grand Prix but then I don't think it was ever really meant to um, they play very differently although Formula 1 Grand Prix is a simulator it, it feels more <sighs> How can I put it? You you can play Formula One Grand Prix far more like a uh, an arcade game than you can this. With this, if you play it as an arcade game and just you know dive straight in, you're not going to get anywhere. Um, I mean, yes, you can certainly play it, but you're not going to progress. You're not going to win races, and you'll be doing really lucky if you can finish higher than about 28th place. Um, but with uh, the Formula 1 Grand Prix, you know, you can dive straight in, just set it so at its easiest, and you can win races off the bat. You don't need to tweak the car, you don't need to make adjustments or anything like that. So, next lap is the final lap, I think. I'm on lap 9, position 3. It looks like first and second place are way, you know, way down the fucking road. I'm not gonna... I don't think I'm even gonna fucking catch up with them, let alone pass them. But, I mean, you can see the speed difference between me and the lower cars. I mean, this is only a 10 lap race and I've been overtaking, you know, been lapping back markers all over the fucking place. And we're only on lap 9. So now we will get the white flags, there we are, so this is the final lap. Still in third. Third is surely going to be the position I finish in. There is no sign of first or second, let alone, you know, let alone the chance to actually overtake them. Oh, I took that final corner a bit wide, didn't like that, but yeah, we got through it okay. So, yeah, three seconds ahead, the uh, next car. So there you go, so I finished third. Uh, 3.6 seconds behind the second place car. 
who was only 0.3 of a second behind the winner. So who was the winner? There you go. Car number 21. An average speed of 221.67 mph. But finishing third, yeah, I'll fucking take that. I have actually won races in the past um, by doing a bit more, you know, tweaking to the car and all that. So yeah, it is. In, it is certainly possible to win a race. You know, it's not. It's certainly not impossible. Um, but yet, yeah, be prepared to actually, you know, take part in the uh, uh, the simulation side of it. You, you do need to do that, otherwise, you're not going to you're not going to be finishing third. You're not going to be winning. Uh, you're not even going to finish in the top ten. So, um, how do I rate it then? Like I say, I think it is absolutely superb. Okay, yes. Grand Prix, you know, Formula 1 Grand Prix, my Jeff Crammon does shade it, but I mean there is so much more in that game than this, this only has the one track, but then if it didn't have just this one track it wouldn't be called Indy 500, would it? So I will score this 9.5 out of 10, and uh, I'd say that if you have an Amiga, doesn't have to be a 1200, if you have uh, any Amiga, or if you have, uh, you know, Win UAE, definitely give this a, uh, a a try it's uh, a fantastic racing game a fantastic racing simulator and I think you will uh, enjoy it a great deal so I give this nine and a half out of ten so it's just half a point behind the uh, Formula One Grand Prix but I do think uh, albeit for, for different reasons it's every bit as enjoyable to play as Formula One Grand Prix and let's face it that is pretty high praise so that brings this review to an end then that is uh indianapolis 500 for commodore amiga nine and a half out of ten uh that brings this review to an end and we'll see you on the next one